The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. Today, we're making logic gates using transistors. In the last episode, we studied logic gates. Today, we're concentrating on five of those, AND, OR, NAND, NOR, and NOT. But rather than use ICs in our circuit, we'll be making each gate using transistors. The circuit requires 5 volts, but I'm using a 9 volt battery, so I also added a 330 ohm resistor to bring the voltage down. Here's the circuit diagram for the AND gate. We've got our power supply going to two switches, each with a 10 kilo ohm resistor going to the bases of two transistors. For this gate, the collector of transistor 1 goes to power, while its emitter goes to the collector of transistor 2. Transistor 2's emitter goes to the LED's anode, as well as a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor, both of which go back to ground. If we remember how transistors work, when a large enough signal is supplied to the base, it allows current to flow between the collector and emitter. So between those two pins, one needs to be connected to ground and the other power. Let's see how this works in the AND gate circuit. An AND gate needs both inputs to be high for the output to be high. Otherwise, the output is low. To supply positive voltage to the LED, power needs to come through Q1's collector and then through Q2. If only one switch is closed, the other transistor acts as a blocker, preventing a connection between power and ground. Both switches need to be closed to supply power to the base of both transistors, allowing current to flow through the collectors and emitters of both transistors to the LED. Let's see how this compares to a NAND gate. Transistor 2's emitter still goes towards ground, but the spare resistor and LED have moved to the collector of transistor 1, and the resistor connects to power instead of ground. With a NAND gate, the output is high unless both inputs are high, so power would route through the 220 ohm resistor to the LED, and it would be on, unless both switches are closed, allowing current to flow through both transistors rather than the LED. Now let's look at an OR gate. This circuit is set up similarly to the AND gate, but rather than Q1's emitter going to Q2's collector, the collectors are connected to each other, and so are the emitters. With an OR gate, as long as any of the inputs are high, the output is high. Since the collectors are connected and the emitters are connected, both transistors are connected to power and simply require a signal at either base to allow current to flow through the emitter, then the LED and ground. You can see that the NOR gate, once again, is like the OR gate, but with the LED and spare resistor moved from Q2's emitter to Q1's collector. Compared side by side, you can see the similarities between the AND and OR gates, as well as the NAND and NOR gates. Since we've seen how a NAND gate works compared to an AND gate, we can see that for the NOR gate to have the opposite results of an OR gate, the LED and resistor are once again moved from the emitter of Q2 to the collector of Q1. If any switch is closed, power is routed through the 220 ohm resistor, then through one or both transistors away from the LED. Lastly, the NOT gate schematic is pretty straightforward. It only has one input switch, and like with NAND and NOR, the LED and extra resistor are connected to the collector of the transistor. This inverts the signal. If the switch is open, power routes through the LED and it is on, a low input to a high output. If the switch is closed, power routes through the transistor and the LED is off, a high input to a low output. Now that we understand how our gate circuits work, let's make our project. I was trying to decide how to do this project and originally had all the gates side by side, each with their own input and output. To consolidate parts, I decided to take a modular approach instead, making one main board with the inputs and outputs and individual boards, one for each gate, with headers to connect the gate boards to the main boards. To keep my little kit nice and tidy, I'm going to build it into two Altoid tins, one that'll hold the main board and battery, and a second to hold all the individual gate boards. If we look back at the schematic for all five gates, we can see that the battery, switches, 10K resistors, and LED stay fairly constant. These will go on the main board. The parts that change are the connections of the emitter and collector of the transistors, and resistor 4's value and position, so the gate boards will have the transistors and that floating resistor. 
I've digitally planned out all five gate boards and figured that they need to be about six holes by eight holes. You can make them by taking larger boards, scoring them, and breaking them apart. This leaves enough room for the two transistors, a resistor, and four header pins at the top and bottom for inputs and outputs. Not all pins will be used, but I put power and ground on both sides for convenience. Okay, I'm gonna use the layouts I made as a reference and solder up all the gate boards. For these circuits, you need NPN transistors. I used BC547s, but you could also use 2N4401s or really any other NPN transistor that can handle 5 volts and 20 milliamps. Be aware when using different NPN transistors, as they don't all have the same pinouts. Okay, time to build the main board. This one will build onto a 15 by 24 piece of proto board. We'll put two 10 millimeter buttons at the bottom for the inputs and add our header pins to plug the gates into the main board. We'll use a 10 kilo ohm resistor to connect each button to the first header. An LED will go on the left, connected to the second header. We'll tuck the board and the battery into the tin, adding a power switch and being sure to connect power and ground to both sets of headers and power down to the buttons. Okay, they're done. Let's test them out. One thing I didn't cover was XOR and XNOR gates because they get quite a bit more complicated, but I'd love to see you try them, so I'm gonna help you out a little bit. I'll post the schematics for those gates on the episode page for this episode on the Element 14 community. If you decide to try out this project, especially if you try out the new gates, I'd love to see your project. Post about it on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning!